going on everybody? It's Tony Two Cent Sabatino, and today I got here J.K. Welder. How's it going? He's a uh, now an actor. He used to be a comedian. Ooh. <laughs> uh, he's from uh, Louisiana, I believe you said, right? Absolutely, man. Yeah, sure. I like Popeye's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so let's get into the uh, the comedy. You were first. You started. What? When? How old were you when you first started comedy? Oh man, I was probably like oh, I was actually twenty five years old. 25? 25 years old, yeah. Man. And how long before that did you decide that you wanted to be a comedian? Like, how long did you did you let it marinate in your brain, or was it something you woke up and said, "I want to be a comedian," today? <laughs> and then just went and found the show and? Oh man, no. Nah. I mean, it had marinated on my brain for a while because mm -hmm. I actually started as an intern at LA Talk Radio. So, oh, okay. you know, I, I hosted a Saturday morning show and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and. Uh, They'll take my talents to South Beach, try something else. You know? No, no, no. Okay, so, LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I ain't get no ships though, bro. I took yeah. L's, but on the yeah. stage. But you know what? Uh, my um, bananas being thrown at you and tomatoes. If, if and they had them, <laughs> if they had them, bro. The, the boomers were out basically, is what you're saying? It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. But uh, you know what? The gift and the curse, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it led me to take acting classes, so, so I could learn because I had stage presence. I just need to learn how to deliver. Yeah. Well, um, I went to the acting class, started doing monologues and stuff, and messed around and did a showcase. You know, to show off the monologue, and the agents were there. And uh, crazy luck, man! I did a Shakespearean monologue. I'd never done Shakespeare before, and uh, this agent was like, "I'd like to talk to you." And uh, in the office, whatever. Shouts out to Pam, my agent. Love you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, she was like, yeah, I'd love to talk to you. And we talked about 30 minutes after that, man, I walked out with a contract. And you know, commercials, films, TV, stuff like that. Uh, lots of commercials. Lots yeah. of commercials. But uh, my heart's in the theater. What though. was your favorite commercial you've done so far? Whew. Uh, I did a series of quick and long joints with Ricky Fowler. Okay. Those, those were fun. <laughs> I got to go, uh, you know, out at the golf course at Del Mar. Oh, nice. You okay. know? So that was pretty dope. And what's the one you did that you didn't like if you can't even talk about that? <laughs> what was uh, the one that you kind of regret doing? Or, just, <laughs> or not even like regret doing, just the one that you were like, damn, I kind of wish I didn't do that one. Uh, like, why did I do that one? Or maybe uh, you just didn't have a lot of fun doing it. Probably, uh, I did a, <laughs> I did a, 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 a PSA for a human trafficking. And I had to play a pimp, bro. Oh, shit. And uh, I ain't talking about, like, <laughs> platforms and, and feathers. I'm talking about, like, about the nabbing girls and stuff, or selling them and stuff. Oh, I mean, it's, damn. It's, a, it's sobering. Like, I was, I was honored to be a part of it because yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Like, the message behind it is yeah, real, exactly. but it's the fact that you were one of the negative ones in that. Oh, man. Yeah. And they had, no, they had like, real officers, you know, from that, you no know, SBUs and different departments and stuff oh, like wow. that as liaisons showing us and telling us how they do this yeah. stuff. It's crazy, man. Like, uh, like say, for instance, if I owe you a debt, you can have somebody come around to my house and say, hey, I'll let you off this debt if you take your neighbor's daughter for me. So if I don't take my neighbor's wow. daughter, I, and I don't owe you no more. Like, and that's real life stuff going on. It's madness, bro. Wow, that's, that's terrible, like, man. You know, so it's like, it's sobering. So you know, to be a part of that, you know, I, it was hard sleeping at night. I'm no sure, no yeah. two little girls at home. But at the same time, you know, I was glad to get the word out there about that. No, it's definitely something good, you know, to spread the word. You know, sadly, we even need to spread the word about yeah, that. Know, especially, the, right. you know, it's 2019. Like, we should be well beyond that by now. Oh, I mean, that was barbaric right. day stuff. Exactly. Not, you know, not real life today stuff. We, you know, we're supposed to be more evolved than that yeah. kind of garbage. Yeah, exactly. For real, man. And then, um, so basically, um, so, you know, so acting-wise, so, um, what's the most fun you've had as an actor so far? <laughs> Oh man, easily just um actually the most fun was probably playing uh playing Senior Benedict and Much Ado About Nothing. Okay, and, nice. and that's a fun role. Yeah. He's, he's real wordy. He mm -hmm. says a lot. He talks actually he talks the most in the play. But man, his words are very modern. Like his words mean whole meaning still mm -hmm. today. Yeah. Because he's just a dude, he's like, Man, girls ain't no trouble, I want nothing to do with yeah, that, exactly. messing with this. But there's that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one that ain't no that one that never backs down from him. Always giving him trouble, and of course it's the one he digs. So, Always yeah. <laughs> it happens every time. Right? <laughs> every time. So yeah, but that was a fun role. That's, so you prefer um, stage or or um, screen? On oh, stage for sure. Yeah. Stage for sure. I always felt like uh, it's kind of a stigma, but I always felt like uh, theater you get to really act. But you, know? you can't really mess up either. It, Exactly. Because that's that's right. one take. There's it, no cut. There's it's no. Pure. It's action. Curtain up. Curtain open. Whatever. And. 
You're rolling until your until your part's done. There's no I, I fucked up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you screw up. You gotta just keep going from there, and then you might not be doing that same part tomorrow. It's very true. Your standing might be there tomorrow. Absolutely. I oh, tell yeah. everybody every time. You know, you might come see me on Thursday, and the perform and the, and the performance that you get on Friday won't even be the same. You know, it's pure. It's uh, the stop and go gives you a little bit of little added taste of, of perfection. Yeah. But theater gives you that added taste of reality. Yeah, because there's even so a lot of like you know Hollywood actors, like you know big A listers that are you know they do you know hundred million dollar movies, but they'll still hang out in Broadway and do plays from oh, time yeah, to time. Absolutely. It's just because it's their passion to do it. You know, and that's what you know. I love Keanu Reeves. He recently got he recently got popular again. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. I've been I've been with homie for a long time. Oh, it's Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted. I can't wait for the new one come out, man. So Hurry I, up I, with I, that I, movie, man. I can't wait hey, to see that, man. Hey, I've been rocking with Bill and Ted. Yeah, yeah. And I've been rocking with Keanu Reeves for a long time. Yeah. And, but uh, a lot of people don't know. Like he's take like he's taking roles in Shakespeare. Like he's been like Hamlet and stuff like that, yeah. man. Like dude's an actor. And he's actually a really good dude. Too. He appreciates his craft. One of his favorite, one of his, one of my favorite roles from him was when he was in Hardball. Oh yeah, that was a good. That one. was a, one of Michael B. Jackson's first movies. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. That was man. a that was a really good movie. So that's a movie movie too. I like that movie. Yeah, before. man. G Baby. Uh, yeah, damn man. And they got G Baby. And you know, like what happened to him? See, G Baby's kind of like like how I live my life. Oh, that kid was always smiling in that movie. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you know what I'm saying. Always just had a smile. It's like you know, a smile on his face, and man, that's what you gotta do. Like absolutely. For real man, but um, so anyway, so so from Louisiana, how did you get out here to California? You uh, what part of California are you living at? In Temecula. Tem Temecula. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if y'all don't know Temecula, um, I don't like to be racial and stuff, but um, oh, yeah. you see the look. Though. He, he, the look, he right? is definitely a minority in Temecula. <laughs> yeah, everybody's a minority. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been up there a few times since I've been out here. It's a it's nice up there. It, it's very, um, very open, very country esque. Yeah. Uh, but it also seems very kind of ghetto too at the same you time. You know, it's Temecula like it's like a ghetto country kind of, right? It is. It is. And you know, Temecula feeds my feeds my countryside. You know, yeah. Louisiana. So over the next, you know, the course of the next year or two, what are your, you know, what are your goals? What are your expectations for yourself? Where are you trying to be? You know, twenty four months from now. Uh, twenty four months from now. Um, uh, <laughs> hopefully, still, still working, still acting. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I think that I would like to, I would like to write a play sometime within the next two years. I, really, I genuinely feel that, you know, when you got to know, when you got a message, you hear mm -hmm. musicians and stuff all the time say, you know, you got a song in your heart, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Well, some of us aren't musicians, you know, yeah. some of us don't sing. So I got something in my heart too. And I feel that finding the passion of theater, I can get that out there straight up with, you know, with theater. Well, I can tell you from personal experience of writing screenplays. I don't know how good mine are personally. I like them. Yeah. I haven't had enough people read them yet. <laughs> I would like to get them made, but it's not as hard as you think it is once you put your mind to it. <clears throat> like I personally wrote one about racism and how it affects the children. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's a short story, but it didn't take me long to write it because I was passionate about it. Right. So once you get it's like once you get that passion for something, yeah. Just you know, I was have a friend that helps me a little bit, but it, all the words and everything, he would just guide me. Yeah. Like how to make sure to put it together the right way, but <clears throat> other than that, you know, once you're passionate for it, it's it really does just flow. For sure, you're absolutely right, and just like so, like and keeping in touch with passion, and, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to do things and needing to do things. I'd also like to open up, um, well, open up a theater company. Well, too, nice. because like I said, you know, there's so many outlets for. It. Every kid who's an athlete, every kid has an athlete, you know, and make you throw a rock and hit a private coach or anything. Oh, like yeah, that. absolutely. You know, I mean, even like dancers and things like that. Mm -hmm. There are tons of acting schools and things like that, but what kids don't know is the craft. Yeah. You know, like I could teach you how to go stand in front of the camera, sit, fold your arms, and say, Hi, my name is Betty Sue. I'm <laughs> six years old. I can teach you how to do that. You know, that. Yeah. But. Like a lot of kids don't know the craft. When the kids usually say they want to be an actor, they want to be on Disney Junior. They want to be on TV. They want to be hang on Minnie and Mickey. Right. You know. And but I think the I think that the appreciation for live theater isn't where it needs to be because we kind of we kind of stepped away from it. You mm -hmm. know. Here recently, Tyler Perry, man, I, he's no he's he, he he's hit or miss with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But you can't. Do you love him or you hate him? There's no in between. Right. You know. You can't. But you can't take away that. He gives, man. This is a giver. He's got a giving soul, yeah, giving spirit. 100%. You know what I'm saying? And what I love that he gives most is the gift of theater. Mm. People started going, like black people started going to see plays like 
regularly, like theater, the arts, like selling out theaters, you know? And I'm like, to go see a, to go see a play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Tyler Berry, but it's a play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I just to, to, to give the gift of theater. Absolutely, it's a beautiful thing right there. All right, so JK, basically, what I want to do is thank you for coming down. First of all, you know, appreciate you taking time on your day to come down and work with us and help us out at the same time. So, you know, hopefully we can help you too. And so, speaking of helping people, what's uh, what's the message you want to put out there for people, like, you know, that think that they can't do it or, you know, they want to do it, but they're just too lazy or they're just like, well, I can never be an actor or a comedian. You know, what's what are you, what's your message to them? Man, be likable. Be patient. Be likable. This, this is a huge industry, man. Hundreds of thousands of people try to do this every single day. And I think I found solace in the fact that once you understand how many people are trying to do this, mm-hmm. you have to act like it's that many people out every there doing it. Yeah. You know? And like, I mean, like to put it in perspective, if one dog is chasing me, I'll probably cool. I'll just hop the fence. Mm-hmm. But if I got a hundred dogs chasing me, I need to, I need, I need to do something different. I, I need to be amazing mm-hmm. to get away from these other dogs. You know what I'm saying? You really got to start playing so, chess. Exactly. So, <laughs> and, you know, so increase that to the, just in LA alone, the thousands and twenties of thousands oh, of kids here. that graduate high school and buy a bus ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like to put all that in the mix. I mean, you got to take the industry for what it is. It's not personal. And those who take it personal usually don't. Don't, don't last. <laughs> mm, yeah. The ones that get offended by something that's going to be they can't. It's the ones that probably can't take criticism. Right. You know, they're, only, they're looking for the positive. Absolutely. All right. So, um, so you're going to do something first day. You're going to perform first day a little. Uh, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I, I can give a. Give you, a you, want, you want to try your foot? You want to try your hand at a comedy again one more time or not? Nah. nah I want y'all to ask me back, so I ain't going to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to come back. So I ain't gonna mess with no comedy this time. Uh, do a little improv. I'm probably gonna share a monologue with you. Oh, that's guys. cool. Yeah, that's so cool. Put a little Shakespeare in the heart, you know. Shakespeare, put a Shakespeare in the heart. That, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's roll. All right, on. Action. <laughs> dedicates his behaviors to love, will after him laugh that such shallow follies and others become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. Such a man is Claudio. I had known when there were no music in him but the drum and the fife. Now he'd rather hear the table and the pipe. I know when he would walk ten miles a foot just to see good armor. And now he lied ten nights awake, carving the fashion of a new doublet. He was wont to speak, play to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier. <laughs> but now, he's turned to orthography. His words are a fantastical banquet. So many strange dishes. May I be so converted and see with these eyes? I cannot tell. I think not. I will not be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster. But I take my oath on it that till they have made an oyster of me. He shall not make me such a fool. <sighs> One woman is fair, and yet I am well. Another is wise, and yet I am well. Another is virtuous, and yet I am well. But till all grace be in one woman, <laughs> one woman shall not come into my grace. <sighs> Rich she shall be, that's certain. Wise are all men. Virtuous, I'll never cheapen her. Fair, I'll never look on her. With my elder, come not near me. No, or not I for an angel. Be a good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair shall be. But what other color, please, God? Hey, Jay, man, thanks for that. Bro. That was dope, right there. That Shakespeare stuff, man. That's, that's real right there, man. That's bringing out to you, Tupac. <laughs> Light work, you know. A little, 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 little. All right, so I want to thank you for coming down. Uh, again, it's Tony Two Cent Sabatino. It's J.K. Weldon. And this is Celeb Watch. Where you can watch the rising favorite celebrity stars. <laughs>